It's good to have you all here. Uh, a couple of announcements. Father's Day is next week. And if you would like a way to honor a father figure in your life, um, past or present, uh, one way to do that would be um, to make a $10 donation for, just as we did the blankets for hope, the, the tools for hope program through the church world service, um, $10 per gift. Um, and one of the emphases they're making that right now is on beekeeping um, as a, like the, the equipment that people could use in developing parts of our world um, to raise bees. So um, that's, that money is going to be gathered for the next two weeks. So, um, yes, it's next week's Father's Day. And we do have cards, too, if you wanted to make a gift in someone's honor and um, take a card to send to them or to someone that loves them. Uh, the, the summer lunch program is just about to begin. We have one more week and a half, eight, nine days. Uh, a week from this Tuesday, we begin, and we will need... Um, individually wrapped snacks from now through August 8th, well, August 6th, when we pro when that will be the last Sunday we meet before the last day of it. Uh, right now, as we speak, our friend Ed Coy is peddling somewhere in Rutland County. He may actually be at Grace Church at this moment. Today is the Tour de Soie, it takes its name from the Tour de France, and uh, the group of uh, cyclists are... Thanks. Um, they are cycling from church to church in UCC Church to UCC Church in Rutland County, and um, altogether, Ed will be cycling around 50 miles. He found out it was a little more than he'd originally been told. Um, <laughs> and he will land in Brandon at 2.30 this afternoon. Um, I am attending that. We're going to have a gathering. We have a, It's a meeting of the Southwest Association. But at the beginning of it, it's going to be kind of a reception. And so um, if anybody would like to come with me, um, Karen's up there kind of following along, driving kind of nearby um, on the route. And if you would like to make a contribution, the money that they're raising through this um, is going to the Hope Fund through the um, Vermont Conference of the United Church of Christ, which we could access if we wanted to. And um, the next chance, if any of you are cyclists or dream of cycling, will be through Bennington County, and we will be one of the stops. In, it'll start in Manchester and make its way to Bennington in October. Um, so uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for that information. But if you want to make, if you also, if you did pledge and you want to make your check out, um, it may, it's made out to the Southwest Association and you can put slash Tour de Soie or somewhere on the mail line just so they know what it's for. And if you know a child between the ages of five and 13, who might want to go to Vacation Bible School, there's a free one. And um, we are not, we are part of the um, Interfaith Council of the Northshire, that is the um, four of the churches are doing it. It will take place uh, July 17th through the 21st at First Congregational Church. It's from 9 to 1230. There's a free snack and free lunch. Everything about it is free. Um, and so if anybody wants information about that to share with somebody they know, um, see me afterwards and I have some things you can some paperwork you can take with you. Other announcements. Just a reminder, too. Um, I think there might be some confusion about Holy Joe's. When you see that basket out there that's near our coffee, um, that money goes to, we haven't had a presentation um, by Tom, who's the um, coordinator of the program down in Connecticut, but it goes to um, supporting the work of chaplains in the military throughout, uh, US military throughout the world. And the idea is, is that coffee makes it easier to talk. And so they've, in many, many uh, ships uh, and bases all around the world, they have they set up an area where the chaplain is with coffee, uh, free coffee and tea. And so um, soldiers and airmen and whoever can um, stop in and hopefully get the support they need. So that is what that money goes to when we have that basket back there every, or, in, or in Bailey Hall every week. And we periodically, as we reach a certain point, we send that money in to the program. Anybody else have any announcements that need to be made today? Thank you also to everybody who helped 
uh, make our table and the goodies on it possible. On Friday, we raised $110 from the bake sale. And there are a bunch of leftovers. So um, if you feel so moved that you want to make a donation, that's fine. If not, you can just take some, some of the yummy goodies because our next time being there isn't until July 7th. So we figured we should definitely share um, the goodies now. Anybody else? Anything else? Well, if not, please open your red hymnal to number 467 as we sing together, Trust and Obey. <coughs> you to join me in the call to worship. Creator God, we praise you. You call us to follow you and we see miracles, a flow of blood healed, the dead raised. Shape us by your word, beloved. Make us yours. Loving and gracious God, we are called to follow you. And still we sometimes fall on times that make it challenging for us to do so. So today, let us follow your words and listen for the message that you have for us the message that we are loved and that we are to love. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join me in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. JD and Charlie, you want to come up? You bring a football with you? Sure. That's fine. So today, um, the story we're going to hear from the Bible in a little bit is um, a story about, um, ooh, that's my phone. Hold on. Hello. <laughs> hey, I can't talk right now. <laughs> I'm kind of busy. We'll see you soon. Bye. So that was... That's okay, thank you. That was an interruption, wasn't it? Do you get do you get interrupted ever when you're doing something? Somebody like stop you from doing something? Sometimes. Sometime. Do you ever interrupt anybody? <laughs> I'm looking at mom's face just now when I said that. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like we have really important stuff we gotta say, and we forget that somebody, and I do the same thing that somebody's talking and they need to finish what they're saying before we say what we're saying. But interruptions are also times we stop people where they're, when they're right there, that they're doing something. And today, yeah, yeah today Jesus gets interrupted because Jesus is walking and um, well, first he's, he's with the man who he calls to follow him. And it's a guy that people don't like very much because it's a guy that collects the taxes from them. And like, we don't mind paying our taxes, but back then they charged a lot, a lot of money to people that didn't have much money. And so, but this guy, all of a sudden, Jesus asked him to follow him and he stopped everything and went. So Jesus kind of interrupted his life and he followed him. And then a little while later, when he's having dinner, um, all of a sudden somebody, uh, this guy, who's like a really important person at um, the synagogue, he comes, he comes in and asks Jesus help. He interrupts the dinner and says, I need you to help me. I, my daughter died. I want you to bring her back to life. He believed so much that Jesus could bring her back to life. That he was, he walked in and said this, and that was kind of hard for him to do. And then when Jesus is walking to this guy's house to help his daughter, another woman, all she does is walk up to him, walk up to Jesus. And she just touches the, the edge of his whatever his um, robe, I guess, um, what Jesus was wearing, and she was made better because she believed that Jesus had that kind of power to make her all better. So sometimes interruptions are good things. The good thing to know, too, is we're never interrupting God. So when we need to say a prayer, it doesn't matter. Like, everything around us is going is crazy. We can stop and say a prayer, just like we'll say now. Loving God, you are never too busy for us to remind us that we can always call on you in prayer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Very good. Amen. Thank you all. Well, just as we know, it's never a bad time to pray. It's always a good time. We have a number of joys and concerns to celebrate today. Today, we pray with another church, and it, today it's our friends at the United Church of Benson and their pastor, Jeremy Ashton. I um, want to send out my congratulations on our behalf to all of the um, graduates of Arlington High School. That happened yesterday. Mom Anthony happened the day before. I think Vern Burton did too. So lots of graduations and celebrations going on. Personally, I want to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the safe arrival of my first and my, well, my parents' first great grandchild, my first great niece or nephew. My um, Molly, Molly was born on Friday to my niece Maureen, and uh, so she's the first of our, that gener the next generation in my extended family. So uh, I want to give thanks for um, her safe arrival. Um, I want to pray for blessings on Caitlin and TJ whose wedding is next Saturday and is the reason I will not be here next weekend. Jane Labruto will be preaching for me. Um, 
they are getting married up on Lake George uh, next Saturday and the celebration's a weekend long thing. So I will be away. Um, I pray for our friend Ed right now for strength and endurance as he rides through the hills and dales of Rutland County. Um, so may his ride be safe. Um, concerns, I would offer um, continued prayers for all of those who knew and loved Mike Lamb Sylvester, whose service was this past Friday. And I would lift up um, all of those folks who have suffered this week because of the wildfires in Canada, and for many of whom are still suffering. Um, and I'd also lift up the people of Ukraine. Other joys or concerns anybody has they'd like us to raise today? Anybody else? Phyllis. <clears throat> A joy for my daughter, Sarah, who is starting a new uh, job at the career. Oh, good. Sarah's new job is a cause for celebration and giving thanks. Karen. Oh, Donna Skidmore? Donna Skidmore? So the family and friends of Donna Skidmore? Anybody else? Nope, continue prayers, continue prayers for our friend John Frost. And Kathy. And Kathy. Any others? Then be with me in prayer, please. Oh, you got another one? Uh, Gloria Alexander turns 96 tomorrow. Ooh, Gloria Alexander has a 96th birthday tomorrow. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, holy God. Great physician, lover of all people, we are astonished by your amazing grace. We are captivated by your power and awed by your mercy. We are filled with thanksgiving today for the blessing of the United Church of Benson and their pastor, Jeremy. We give thanks and celebrate with all of those who graduated this past weekend. We also lift up and give thanks for the safe birth of Mo baby Molly. And we celebrate with Caitlin and TJ on their wedding this coming weekend. We pray prayers of love and support and strength and endurance for Ed as he continues his ride on our behalf throughout Rutland County right now. We celebrate with Sarah on her new job and give thanks for Gloria's 96 years on this earth. Oh God, in the heart of our hearts, we long to know you more deeply, to touch even the fringes of your cloak, and to know your peace and healing. We strain our ears to hear you call us daughters and sons like so many before us. We pray for the faith that can make us whole. And we pray for those in need of your healing today, for the sick, for the injured and hospitalized, and for those whose illness has isolated them from their community. Give them a spirit of healing and hope for the outcast and for those who have cast out through our action or inaction. Shine a light on our prejudices, soften our hardened hearts, and transform us for loving service toward every Christ we meet. For those who mourn and weep, let them stand firm in your promises, buoyed by your strength and care. Give them the comfort and assurance that nothing can separate them from your love. Today, we are especially mindful of those we know who are hurting or grieving, confused or lost. We specifically by name lift up to your tender care all those who knew and loved Mike Lan and Donna who have gone on to new life in you. We pray continued healing prayers for John and loving support for Kathy. And we lift up all of those whose breathing has been impacted, whose lives have been changed by the wildfires in Canada. We also hold the people of Ukraine in our prayer. 
loving God, we pray that healing and hope would reign in this world. Where there is conflict and war, let there be peace. Where there is hunger and poverty, let there be abundance. Where there is distress and despair, let there be light, warm and unquenchable. We pray to hear your words, follow me. For they are words not only of discipleship, but of assurance that as your disciples, we will never be forgotten. You will lead us, all of us, into unexpected places. Give us the courage to follow you each day of our lives. We are called to build a community, one beyond the status quo, beyond our own expectations. This comes at a cost of time, talent, and treasure. And just as Jesus stirred the hearts of his disciples, we are called to be stirred to give toward this kingdom that we are creating. Let us bring forth our offerings. Loving God, we yearn for your touch. We know that you are here and you are among these gifts. So let us be touched by your grace and mercy, that we might share them and share them with your world, creating peace and mercy, spreading grace wherever we go. Bless these gifts and bless these lives for your service. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn your red hymnals to number 140 as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
that song. Good morning. And wow, is that a good one? I don't think anybody, it's, when we got up this morning, I don't think we expected it to be this nice. As a matter of fact, I texted you, Kathy, <laughs> but it never went. Oh, story of my life. <laughs> Today's Psalter is Psalm 33, 1 through 12 in your bulletins. Rejoice in the Lord, all you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made in all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Today's, oops, today's scripture is Matthew 9 through chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, and then we skip to 18 through 26. And um, just a little background, Jesus has just left his hometown um, and was disappointed, but he did perform a miracle while he was there. And so now I think he's in California, is he? I think so. Yeah. Um, so this is chapter 9, 9 through 13. And it's titled, Jesus Eats with the Sinners at Matthew's House, which wasn't that uncommon. Matthew hosted a lot of meetings so that people could meet Jesus. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me. He told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked the disciples, Why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. And now we go to 18 through 26. Jesus heals a bleeding woman and restores a girl to life. While he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him. And so did his disciples. Just as a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his robe. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. And Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. When Jesus, Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After they, the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand. And she got up. 
news of this spread through all that region. Blessings on these words. What was once used to refer to the spreading of disease has taken on new meaning. It still spreads, and some might think of it as having the potential to be as hurtful, just in a different way, as COVID or measles. This is social media, and how a video or meme or tidbit of real news or celebrity gossip can, within hours, spread throughout the entire world. As an example, on January 13th, 2022, Baby Shark, you can all sing along if you want, became the first and only video to surpass 10 billion, that's more humans than live on the planet, 10 billion views. And now I too have that song on continuous loop in my head. Love it or hate it or are neutral about it, we are connected by technology just in this century in a way that was beyond the wildest imaginings of any of us over the age of 50. We never could have dreamed of this as a child. I have more information flashing onto my watch in a day than my great, great grandmother would have learned about in a year. And still, we struggle with the same feelings of doubt and pain and loss that every generation since the beginning of time has experienced. We still are creatures whose lives are devoted to making meaning of our existence. And there is still so much of life that defies explanation. The meaning making for some of us comes in determining where we are being called. For whom and with whom will we listen? Will it be that still small voice within us that is pulling us toward work or community, or a cause that has our name on it, but we are too accustomed to pushing it aside because other parts of life have a louder or more insistent voice. This Matthew, sitting in the tax collector booth, a place of both profit and derision by all those who are forced to hand over exorbitant taxes to the Roman Empire, quickly abandons his place of ill-gotten gain in favor of discipleship. We have to wonder, had he just been waiting for the perfect moment to turn his life around? Jesus's reputation and power would have preceded him, and it could be that Matthew was in desperate need of taking his life in a different direction. He couldn't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. And the way offered by Jesus would turn his world upside down. We know so little about this particular Matthew, just his name and his job, and the fact that he goes from the unsavory work of getting as much money out of people that could ill afford it as possible, and he shifts from that to following Jesus, who had little use for money, but plenty of time and room for those with few resources. We see just how little regard Matthew is held in when the Pharisees find him along with others considered sinners, and can't believe that Jesus, this man everyone is following, will sit down and eat with those they consider the scum of the earth. And Jesus turns their outrage into a lesson on mercy, using words they would only be too familiar with from Hosea. Inclusion. Who's in and who's out we still grapple with this, don't we? We choose neighborhoods to live in, jobs to take, schools to send our children to, even churches, because we want to be included. When we think back on history and how much energy was invested in welcoming some and excluding many others, we recognize that we still need Jesus' reminder. When we get to the second part of today's reading, we find the reversal that Jesus heralds on full display. Jesus has a preference and extends true hospitality to those who recognize their need for help. 
He walks through the world treasuring those most in need of God's mercy. Just after the Pharisees challenged Jesus, the synagogue leader, someone who would certainly be considered righteous, comes to Jesus for help for his dead daughter. Just like Matthew before him, Jesus immediately and without words gets up and follows the man who has so much faith in Jesus' ability to heal. And on the way, the hemorrhaging woman uses touch, something society would have told her was forbidden given her condition and what could have put Jesus at risk of being ostracized. And she's there to live out her faith. Faith is what heals the woman and faith is what heals the father's daughter. And this news of faith having the power to heal went in its own way at the time viral. The idea of calling and faith colliding is still ours today. The healing we need may just be what feeds on our faith. And the attention paid to our calling may put us in the healing business ourselves. I know some of you have been part of what is known as the healing professions, and I lift up all that you have offered to so many you have encountered throughout your life. I now would extend an invitation that the rest of us might also view ourselves as healers. What we have to offer through the living of our days with compassion and walking beside those with hard journeys is the light and power of God because what we have learned from Jesus. Listening to our call and being there when others are in need of listening does make all the difference. Our hurting world needs us to heed the call to healing. Let us then find a path forward with these words from unfolding light. Yes, you, unsuspecting, unprepared, unqualified, you are called. The call is not about your powers or skills. The call is to be the one you are created to be. With all the gifts of the spirit, you'll need to do that. The call is to follow Jesus in whatever unexpected way he turns up in your life, to bring your weakness and your not knowing into his friendship, to hand over your gifts without knowing how he may use them. The call is to walk with him, to hold the space while he does his miracles. He needs you. Just keep him company. Stay close enough to his light that you yourself are radiant. Let us go out singing our closing hymn, number 368 in the red hymnal, My Hope is Built.
Go to the places Christ God sends you. Bless the people Christ calls you to bless. Strengthen the faith of the hopeless and despairing. Go with God's blessing. Amen. Amen. God be with you always. Let us go now offer each other signs and words of God's peace. Thank you, everybody.